A new study was published earlier this week that identified significant associations for a relatively higher dietary fiber intake with muscle mass and strength, but also higher bone mineral content and improved insulin sensitivity, as indicated by HOMA, and more on that in a minute, but also lower fat mass, insulin, and glucose. So let's have a look at the data. So first, let's start with body weight or body mass, and that's on the y-axis, which is plotted against dietary fiber intake in grams per day. And what we can see is that when looking at a linear model in blue or a nonlinear model, the spline model in red, we can see that the higher the dietary fiber intake, the lower the body, body mass. And I should mention that the, uh, this data is from NHANES 2011 through 2018, so the U.S. Uh, National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. And for data on body mass, it included more than 6,000 people that had an average age of 50 years. So unsurprisingly, because BMI includes body weight as the numerator, uh, we see a similar trend for BMI. So the higher the dietary fiber intake, the lower the BMI. And again, this data goes up to about 50 grams per day. Now, it's important to note that all of the models that I'm going to present from the paper were adjusted for factors that can impact these associations, including gender, age, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, smoking status, and how physically active or inactive defined as sedentary activity. Also, dietary factors including calorie intake, alcohol intake, and diet composition, including the percentage of calories from protein, carbohydrate, and fat, were included as uh, variables in, uh, that, that were accounted for. So they, uh, these models were adjusted for those factors. So uh, body weight and BMI are interesting, but more specifically, what's the association between dietary fiber intake with body composition? So it's important to note that body composition was assess assessed with dual X-ray absorptiometry, uh, otherwise known as DEXA, which provides info about whole body lean mass, whole body fat mass, and whole body bone mineral content. So first, starting with whole body lean mass, and it's uh, on the y-axis, we see relative total whole body lean mass divided by body weight because with a larger body mass, you'd expect to have more lean mass. So by dividing by whole body, uh, whole body weight, grams of lean mass divided by body weight, you account for body size. So that's on the y-axis plotted against dietary fiber intake on the x-axis. And what we can see is for both the linear and nonlinear model, the higher the dietary fiber intake, that's associated with a higher whole body lean mass. Now it's important to note that uh, when measuring total body or whole body lean mass by DEXA, uh, it doesn't only include skeletal muscle but the organs too. And one way to account for that is by measuring appendicular lean mass, which includes lean mass of the arms plus legs. So that's what we can see here, relative, relative levels of appendicular lean mass, so uh, lean mass of the arms and legs, divided by uh, body weight, whole body weight, uh, whole body body weight. And that's plotted against dietary fiber intake on the x-axis. And again, both the linear and nonlinear models, we can see that the higher the dietary fiber intake, the higher the levels of appendicular or relative levels of appendicular lean mass. So uh, having more muscle mass, uh, and again, appendicular lean mass because it's ar arms and legs and there are no organs, there are no major organs, uh, it's uh, usually thought of as, an, as a, a pretty good marker of skeletal muscle mass. So is this an indication of having more muscle mass but what's the consequence on function? So strength, muscle strength. And that's what we can see here. So uh, on the y-axis, we've got relative combined grip strength. So this is the grip strength of the right and left hands combined divided by body weight. And that's plotted on the x-axis against dietary fiber intake in grams per day. And notice that the sample size, the N, for this data is significantly less than the body weight measurement. So this is about 5,300 subjects that had an average age of 58 years. And again, from the same study though, NHANES 2011 through 2018. So we can again see that for both the linear and the nonlinear model, the higher the dietary fiber intake, the higher the grip strength. So uh, muscle uh, changes for muscle and muscle strength, muscle mass and strength usually track with bone changes. So higher levels of muscle mass and strength you usually track with higher levels of bone mineral density, and conversely, lower levels of muscle mass and strength usually track with lower bone mineral density. So what, what's the association for bone mineral density? So that's what we can see here, relative bone, total body bone mineral content on the y-axis plotted against dietary fiber intake. And we can see that once fiber intake gets about, uh, past about 20 grams per day, we can see significantly higher levels of bone mineral content uh, in association with High, relatively higher levels of dietary fiber intake. So to summarize these data so far, a higher dietary fiber intake up to about 50 grams per day, as in this study, is significantly associated with higher levels of lean mass, higher muscle mass, in other words, the appendicular muscle mass, uh, higher levels of grip strength, and higher levels of bone mineral content. So what about fat mass? 
So that's what we can see here, relative levels of whole body lean mass divided by body weight, and that's plotted against uh, fiber intake on the x-axis. And now we see an inverse association. The higher the dietary fiber intake, again, up to 50 grams per day, the lower the levels of whole body fat mass. Now, similar data were also identified for trunk fat mass, and that's important because trunk fat, fat mass has a large influence on insulin sensitivity. So with that in mind, is a higher dietary, di sorry, dietary fiber intake associated with lower levels of glucose and or insulin? So uh, here's the glucose data, and we're looking at fasting levels of glucose on the y-axis plotted against fiber intake on the x-axis. And now we see more variability. We can see that shaded region, which is the confidence interval for the data, both for the linear and nonlinear model, we can see that it's not both below zero, which would in indicate a significant effect. However, in the study, they, uh, with the statistics, with the uh, model adjustments, they actually found a small but statistically significant effect for relatively higher levels of fiber on having a lower fasted glucose. Now, what about fasting levels of insulin? And that's what we can see here. So although the glucose data is more variable and uh, somewhat close, closer to statistical significance, now we can see a more stronger, a stronger effect for the association between fiber intake with fasting levels of insulin. And for both the linear and nonlinear model, now we see that the higher the levels of fiber, the higher uh, levels of dietary fiber intake, the lower the levels of fasting insulin, which is going in the right direction because insulin levels increase during aging. So uh, it isn't just insulin that a higher fiber intake was associated with. Uh, a higher fiber intake was also associated with insulin sensitivity. And the way they assessed that was by looking at HOMA, which is the, uh, the homeostasis model assessment. So HOMA 2 IR as a model of insulin resistance. And that's on the y-axis. Um, and it's calculated with measurements of the fasting glucose and insulin data. So now we can see the, uh, the data tracks with the insulin data. Even though the glucose data was somewhat variable, we can see that overall insulin sensitivity as indicated by HOMA uh, for relatively higher levels of dietary fiber, there is more insulin sensitivity as indicated by a lower uh, HOMA, HOMA score. Now it's important to note that all of the data in this study are associations. What about causation? So uh, there aren't any randomized controlled trials, RCTs, yet for the impact of uh, uh, fiber, uh, fiber intakes greater than 50 grams per day on body composition in older adults. And I've studied this pretty extensively. I've looked into the literature pretty extensively. If anyone's come across studies that have looked at uh, fiber intakes greater than 50 grams per day on body composition, so lean mass, bone density, fat mass, please post it in the comments below. Share, share it with the community. Now, uh, there is one study that um, has, has looked at the impact of a uh, more than 50 grams of fiber per day on insulin sensitivity, more specifically on insulin levels. Uh, so uh, when, when compared uh, with 20 grams per day at baseline, when those sub same subjects were given 51 grams per day, uh, that was enough to reduce uh, insulin levels by 29% in 53-year-olds. Year so that's it, just one study, one RCT, looking at the impact of a higher fiber diet on body composition and insulin levels, insulin and glucose, insulin sensitivity, uh, in older adults. So with this in mind, I think there should be RCTs that go after that uh, hypothesis that a very high fiber diet, more than 50 grams per day, can improve body composition and metabolic features, including insulin sensitivity in relatively older adults. All right, that's all for now. Uh, if you're interested in more, uh, come check us out on Patreon. And thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.